Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Factor UPSC. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the first chapter of political science of 8th standard and the name of chapter is the Indian Constitution. It's very important topic and it's very important chapter regarding NCRT exams as well as UPSC and PSC exams. This is a brief introduction of the constitution which we have to know, which all the Indians and all the students have to know because the continuation of this chapter we can find in chapter 9 as well as chapter 10. If you take humanities as subject in plus 1 and plus 2, the continuation of this chapter we can find there in plus 1 Texas as well as plus 2 Texas. So it's very important and keep a focus and keep a deep focus on this chapter. So as a part of introduction, we have to discuss what is a constitution. Let's see what a constitution is. Constitution is usually a written document which contains the rules of governing a sovereign state. I am not going through sentence by sentence, but I have included the main crypts of this chapter. So you have to read the text along with watching this video so you can easily grasp the ideas. So what's a constitution? Constitution is usually a written document which contains the rules of governing a sovereign state. That's what is written in this introduction part. So let's see uh, what are the some basic facts which we have to know about the constitution. During the adoption of the constitution, there are 395 articles, 8 schedules and 22 parts in the constitution. And it's counted that it was about 1,40,000 words encrypted on the constitution. Now that means in the present situation, there are 470 articles along with 12 schedules and 25 parts. And the constitution came into effect on 26 January 1950 and it celebrated as Republic Day. Okay, is that clear? And an important idea or important point is that the idea of constitution was put forward by M. N. Roy, a member of Constituent Assembly. So let's look into the chapter. Today the most countries in the world have a constitution while all democratic countries are likely to have a constitution. It's not necessary that all the countries that have the constitution are democratic. That means today, that means in the present situation, every countries, that means every democratic countries have constitution. But it's also a fact that the countries which contains the constitution are not democratic also. That means there exists a two situation. Okay, the constitution serves several purposes. First, it lays out certain ideas that from the that form the basis of the kind of a country that we citizens aspire to live in. That means the constitution put forward a situation to the people to live. That means it enable the enable the situation of perfect living. A country is usually made up of different communities of people who share certain beliefs but may not necessarily agree on all issues. A constitution helps to serve a set of rules and principles that all the person in a country can agree upon as the basis of the way which they want to live in a country. That means a country we cannot say that uh, suppose if we take India as an example we cannot say that India contains only Hindus or only Muslims or only Christians etc. India is a combination of all countries that uh, of all, all religion because India contains every religion that means India is accepting or Indian constitution is accepting all religion. So for a country that means for a diverse for a country which is of diverse situations and diverse religions and diverse cultures for unifying them a fact that means a basic fact that unify all people together is a constitution is that clear 
here is a situation of the, the we can find that the Nepal that means uh, there is a situation there's a picture which depicts the Nepal is striving towards freedom the country has a uh, country of Nepal has witnessed several people struggle for the democracy and there was a people struggle in 1990 that established democracy that lasted for, for 12 years until 2002 in October 2002 the king citing the Maoist uprising in the countryside as this reason began to taking over the different aspects of government with the army assistance and the king finally took over the head of the government in February 2005. In November 2005 the Maoists joined other political parties to sign the 12 point agreement and this agreement has signaled to larger public and public and imminent return in the, to the democracy and the peace. The simple concept is that the, that the Nepal was facing a monocratic rule which the king has had and the people have people was fed up with the, with his rule so they started agitating or they started agitating with the help of Maoist to form a democratic government and as a result the king was supposed to, to conduct elections in Nepal and the Nepal also strive freedom by providing a constitution okay so by looking to this factor we can find that how a constitution is very very important in a country so let's look or let's look and symbol another point that what is a democracy it's a question towards you what's a democracy is a form of government in which the people at large hold that unit that ultimate power of governance it's a form of government in which the people at large hold the ultimate power of governance the representative of the people constitute the government and undertake the constitutional responsibilities in order to achieve the ideals and ideals of the constitution so democracy that means the democracy is a concept in which the people have that means in india we say that of the people by the people and for the people which means that the peoples are selecting people's representatives for identifying people's wants so democracy is a such form of government in text we can find a simple concept of democracy look here in democracy we choose our leaders so that they can exercise power responsibility on behalf however there is always the possibility that leaders might misuse their authority and the constitution and constitution usually provides safeguard against this this misuse of authority can result in gross injustice and demonstrated in the classroom situation below that means uh, there is a story which is uh, of interesting story that uh, you can yourself read in the ncrt text but uh, there is a concept of democracy and the uh, misrule of the government uh, we can detail look into that so what's democracy we choose our leaders so that they can exercise power and responsibility on be on our behalf that means we are choosing our leaders and they they are ruling for us however that means there is a situation that or there is a chance that these leaders may misuse their authority for their own needs so there is the importance of constitution that the constitution is usually providing safeguard against this misrule that means the constitution can pave a way pave a good way for providing us good governance okay the constitution often lays down the rules that got against the misuse of the authority by our political leaders and the third significance is that that means there's a look here there's a third significance the third significance is that why we need a constitution is to save us ourself to save us ourself this may sound strange but what is meant by this is that we might uh, we might at feel str feel strongly about an issue that might go against our larger interests and the constitution help us to guard against this that means it provide a way for our self respect and the self freedom that means we have and we can keep a standard that means we can keep a standard of ourselves in a society that mean that means that we do not have to bow any other one because because of they are of high caste or high religion or something etc okay so we can keep our own dignity that 
that's what is encrypted here that the third reason of the constitution or the third significance of the constitution is that we can save us from ourselves okay look here there's an another point a good constitution does not allow the whims to change its basic structure it does not allow for the easy overthrow of the provisions that guarantee the rights of citizens and protect their freedom it's an important concept and it's an important concept in the present situation also that means we can amend the constitution there is amendment in the constitution as we know there is amendment that means we can change our constitution according to the present situation but there is a restriction that a good constitution does not allow these whims to change its basic structure that means we cannot change the basic basic structure of the constitution but we can change constitution by keeping its basic structure by this there's a significant case that the basic structure doctrine which was put forward by keshavananda bharati case that is uh, that is entrusted with the supreme court in 1972 so according to the keshavananda bharati case there exists a basic structure doctrine which does not allow to change the basic structure of the indian constitution is that clear there is another concept that is federalism what is federalism the existence of more than one level of government in a country is known as federalism the existence of more than one level of a government in a country is came to be known as federalism the person who is elected by the people through general election to represent a constituency in a government okay it's a basic fact that that i am discussing that uh, what is representative who is a representative a person who is elected by the people through a general election to represent the constituency in a government is known as a representative that means uh, our representative to the political party such as mla mp something etc so who is a representative a person who is elected by the people through a general election to represent the constituency in a government is known as representative so let's see what is secularism secularism means a system under which a state does not originally or officially promote any one religion as the state religion so when we consider the fact of india so when we consider the fact of india in india there exists secularism as i said previously that indian india does not have any official religion india is accepting all religion and all culture so we can say india is a secular state so what is a secularism a state under which the state does not officially promote any one of the religion as the state religion it is known as secularism so let's look the indian constitution and the key features so so let's we can see, we can see what are the key features of the indian constitution a group of 300 members became the member of the constituent assembly in 1946 and had written the indian constitution while writing the indian constitution these members keep kept in mind that the different communities who speak different languages belong to the different religion and have the distinct culture that means indian constitution is a uh, indian constitution is not made by one people but it is a uh, it's a companion or it's a it's a it's a group effort and a group work that we can find that the indian constitution become the largest constitution in the world so it is a group of 300 people became the member of the constituent assembly in 1946 had returned the indian constitution while writing the indian constitution while writing the indian constitution these members kept in mind that the different communities who speak different languages belong to different religions and have the distinct culture live in india so they try to combine or they try to coordinate all these facts together to make the indian constitution so let's see what are the features of indian constitution before that there is a picture of a man who is known as the father of indian constitution 
he is none other than dr baba sahib dr uh, baba sahib dr ambedkar he is known as the father of indian constitution dr ambedkar believed that his participation in the constituent assembly helped the scheduled caste to get some safeguard in the draft in the drafting constitution but he also started that although the although the laws might exist scheduled castes still had reason to fear because the administration of these laws were in the hands of the caste of hindu officers so therefore he urged the scheduled caste to join the government as well as civil service dr ambedkar is known as the father of indian constitution he also strive to develop or strive for the forwarding of or strive for the development of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes okay so let's look each of the main features of indian constitution and the first is federalism the federalism means that it refers to the existence of more than one level of government in the country in india we have the government at the state level at the central level at the panchayat level and at the village level the constitution contains the list that detail the issue that each tier of government can make law on in addition the constitution also specifies where where each tier of the government can get where from the where the money from all the people in india are governed by the laws and the policies made by each level of government okay it's a it is a summary that means it's, it's a basic content of this point of federalism i repeat once more it refers to the existence of more than one level of government in a country in india we have different level of government become mainly three tier government at the panchayat level village level or that to the central level etc and the constitution contain the lists that were detailed in the issue that each tier of government can make the law on in addition the constitution also specifies where the government or the where this specified level of government get the money okay these are the main features of the federalism which is encrypted in the constitution and the second feature is parliamentary form of government we adopt parliamentary form of government from britain okay it's an important point that we adopt a parliamentary form of government from britain so what is what is the basic concept of the parliamentary form of government the people of india have a direct role in electing their representative okay that means we the people of india are electing our representative there is a beautiful picture which shows the election situation on the um, on the earlier times look there is a crowd of the people they are they are coming to the voting poll voting poll or the voting booth for selecting their representative this is the main feature of which main feature that contains a parliamentary form of government okay the people of the india have the direct role in electing their representative also every citizen of the country irrespective of his social background can contest in election so there is no uh, no eligibility criteria only eligibility criteria is he or she must be a adult that contain that means that he or she might have completed 18 years of age okay nothing else so the parliamentary form of government means every citizen in india have their right to elect their representatives irrespective of his or her social background can contest in election okay and the third feature is separation of power let's look what is mean by the separation of power there are three organ of the government that means the separation of the separation of power means there are three organs of a government that means legislature executive and judici- judiciary as we know what do you mean by is, what, what is legislature legislature refers to elected representatives by the people that means uh, the people who are elected by us through the election are changed to the legislature and the executive is a smaller group of people who are responsible for implementing the law and running the government so the responsibility of running the government and uh, implementing laws are in the hands of executives and the judiciary refers to the system of the court in india each organs are mentioned ma- mentioned above act as a checkpoint of the organs of government so the judiciary contain it refers to the system of courts in india that means there are courts such as uh, from from lower courts to the high court that is supreme court high court 
um, then uh, state court then sessions court etc so these all together form the judiciary so the legislature refer to the elected representatives by the people executive is a smaller group of the people who are responsible for implementing their law and the judiciary refers to the system of the courts in india and all these three organs mentioned above act as the check on these other organs this ensure the balance of power between the three so the separation of power means the government is separating the power to these three institutions such as legislature judiciary and executive the constitution guarantees the rights of individual against the state as well as against other individuals it also guarantees the rights of minorities against the majority these are the main features of fundamental rights that means the constitution itself provides a security or security of existence beyond the discrimination and overruling of other higher societies that the fundamental rights guarantees there were seven fundamental rights previously now the right to property that means the seventh one is deleted and now there are six fundamental rights let's see let's look the on the right right side of the call the page that there were the fundamental rights are encrypted here there are six fundamental rights let's see which are they they are the right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom of religion the right to cultural and education rights and the right for constitutional remedies so what is right to equality all the persons are equal before law this means that all persons shall be equally protected by the law of the country so it also states that no citizen shall be discriminated against the basis of their religion caste or the sex every person has access to the public places including playground hotels shops etc the state cannot discriminate against anyone in the matters of employment but there are exceptions to the to this when you when you read to the book and the, what is right to freedom this include the right to freedom of the speech and the expression right from uh, right to form associations right to move freely and reside in any part of the country and right to practice any profession and the occupation of the business and the third one is right against exploitation this means that the constitution prohibits the human trafficking the forced labor and the employment of children under the age of 14 and the and the fourth one is right to freedom of religion that means that the religion the religious freedom is provided to all citizens and every person has the right to practice and the profess and propagate the religions of their own choice that means the concept of secularism is is described in the right to freedom of religion and the fifth one is the right for the cultural and educational rights the constitution states that all the minorities religious or the linguistic can set up their own educational institutions in order to preserve and develop their own culture and the sixth and last one is right to constitutional remedies and this is known as the heart and soul of indian constitution so it's a question that which and which right is known as the heart and soul of indian constitution the right to constitutional remedies is known as the heart and soul of indian constitution because this allows a citizen to move to the court if they believe that their fundamental rights have been violated by the states so kindly go through these six fundamental rights which are when we look into the right side of the page we can find that the several photographs in the first photo which shows that the jawaharlal nehru jawaharlal nehru our first prime minister is signing the constitution and the second picture shows the our rajendra prasad that means our first president is signing it and the third picture shows gandhi ji jawaharlal nehru along with uh, dr b r ambedkar etc were signing the constitution and the above photo shows the various members of the constituent assembly signing the copy of the constitution at the final section on 24th january 1950 okay so uh, by this our chapter is ending let's look into the exercise of the chapter uh, why does a democratic country need a constitution why does a democratic country constitu- need a constitution a democratic country need a constitution because it lays out the important guidelines that govern the decision making within the various section of the country and it lays down the ideals that from the basis kind of the country that its citizen aspire to live in it also serve as an asset of the rules and principles as the basis by which the country should be governed 
like this these points are on the first or second page of the our textbook go through it and the second exercise is that look at the wordings on the two documents given below and the first column is from the 1990 nepal constitution and the second column is from more than the recent of the interim constitution of the nepal so what is the difference between this constitution that's the that's the main question and we can find we, we know that in 1990s there existed the executive power that is the king or the king or the his majesty is the main ruler and his king his majesty along with the council of ministers were the main rulers of this of the nepal and 2015 the nepal got the constitution so there will be elections in the in the nepal and uh, there will be the council of ministers who were directly who were who were elected by the people so there will be the change kindly go through that that on the second page and the third is that what would happen if there was no restrictions on the power of elected representative what would have what would be happen if there are no restrictions on the power of elected representatives the leader might misuse their power given to them and the constitution provide the safeguards against the misuse of the power by our political leaders okay and the five is the key features and its significance let's go through that what is federalism federalism means it ensures the national unity and at the same time it allows individual progress a federal government allows central to hold the supreme power but its constitutional states have the same powers as well and the second is what are the separation of the power what do you mean by separation of power this serves to per this serves two purposes firstly tyrannical use of the power is avoided since it does not waste in the power of a single authority that means it avoids the single authority power but the separation of power provides the authority towards other sectors such as um, as we have discussed in that legislative judiciary and executive and the, what are the fundamental rights fundamental rights means in the word itself it signify signifies that they are fundamental for our living that means these rights are very fundamental that it cannot be taken by the government except in the situation of emergency that we will discuss uh, on the next lectures as well and the parliamentary form of government what is a parliamentary form of government the parliament the parliamentary form of government which upholds the universal adult franchise and this this entails the fact that the people of a country play a direct role in electing the representatives to run the state as well as the nation okay so these are the main concepts which will uh, which were very important regarding ncert exams and the upsc as well as psc exams so kindly go through this chapter it's very simple and it's a it provides a basic structure for our political st science study so it's very important read this chapter many times and get through this chapter okay so i hope you enjoyed this lecture if you like my video like this subscribe if you those who are those who does not subscribe to my channel please subscribe my channel and share this video to your friends thank you very important regarding the ncert as well as the upsc examinations and the fundamental rights have the two fold objectives let's look at the like this look which are the two fold objectives of these fundamental rights every citizen must be in a position to claim the fundamental rights that means that every citizen have will be in a safe position to claim the fundamental rights and the second one is fundamental rights must be binding upon every authority that has got the lower power to make the law the constitution has a selection uh, has a section called as directive principles of the state policy which ensure the greater social and the economic reforms and serve a gate to the independent indian state to the institute and the law of policies that means that beyond this fundamental rights there are also uh, dpsp or the directive principles of the state policy which ensure that the state policy should ensure the greater role of social and economic reforms it introduces a greater role of social and economic reforms and the fifth and the fifth point is secularism that we have discussed earlier that the secular state means that which the country does not officially promote any religion as the state religion and um, 
it binds or it coordinates all the religion together to for to con to lead the country in a straight manner it is known as secularism